Morning San Antonio starts right now. And coming up, the feud between the president and the nation's top health experts on the coronavirus continues. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. Outside with live cam and it is 72 degrees out at the airport. Mike is teasing us with his KSAT weather push alert this morning. Nice today, great tomorrow then dot dot dot. We'll find out the details coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is September 18th. Thanks for joining us. And while we wait to find out the details, let's be thankful for the rain we had yeah. yesterday. That was pretty cool. I actually had some yesterday, mm -hmm. Mike. It Me was too. a little gusty wind and then some downpours yet again. And what was interesting is because uh, we had the big wave of rain move through and then temperatures shot up. And I was talking to Justin Horn. He goes, yeah, he goes, all the rain moved, but then more developed in behind it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us that didn't see rain the previous day didn't miss out on it. Now, as far as what's going to be happening later on in the weekend, uh, that's what's going on down there in the southern Gulf of Mexico in the Bay of Campeche. That in one second. But, I mean, you look at radar right now, there's nothing showing up on uh, radar as of right now. We may see a couple of showers later on. This rain here along the coast arguably is the very, very, very northern edge of this system down here in the Gulf of Mexico. It is tropical depression. Sorry, I've got some uh, graphics on top of each other, but tropical depression number 22, 35 mile per hour winds becomes uh, at 39. It would become tropical storm Wilfred and it's this is the enhanced satellite picture, so it just shows the higher cloud tops. And as you can see, it's got a fairly, uh, fairly good shape to it. And some of these clouds being pushed out ahead of it there. And that's why we've got some of that rain right there along the coast. Like I said, arguably being pushed out ahead of the storm and associated with it. And it is going to continue to work its way up to the north. This is throughout the day tomorrow. Then as we get in toward later on the weekend, it's going to make a kind of a dog leg turn to the west. Now, this is the Kona of uncertainty, and this does not mean that's the center of the path. That means anywhere from Louisiana down in toward Mexico is where this thing could go. So it is not set in stone in any way, shape or form. As it looks right now, we're going to start to see some uh, rain from it by probably late in the afternoon on Sunday. There's going to be a lot more going on, and the forecast will definitely be updating as time goes on. We're at 72 degrees right now, mid-60s parts of the hill country. Not bad when you step outside. Mold, fall elm, ragweed are all on the moderate side. And I think we're dropping down a couple of more degrees in the morning. 70 this morning, and then later on this afternoon, 90. Partly cloudy. A couple of showers are possible. Not very likely, though. And wind out in the northeast about 10, 15. Kind of breezy at times. Gorgeous tomorrow. More on what may happen in the next week coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope we're having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, dealing with one accident right now. This is going to be at Old Seguin Road at FM 78. Uh, accident is fairly new. I'll get you more info on this accident when I can. All right, construction eastbound IH10 West from Camp Bullis all the way to 1604 eastbound I-10. Once again, closed. You're going to have to exit Camp Bullis Road if you want to continue eastbound on I-10 um, there. All right, also dealing with this major accident, southbound IH-35 at South Loop 1604. Now, the southbound lanes of 34 are completely closed down. This is due to an 18-wheeler accident earlier at 1 in the morning, but there's still a lot of debris on the roadway, and for the time being, you have to exit 1604 and cannot continue down 35 south. This is once again this is southbound IH35 at South Loop 1604. Southbound 35 is closed down. All right, Mark Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. After weeks on the downtrend for COVID-19, locally four more people were admitted to the hospital according to recent reports. A total of 214 COVID-19 patients are now in the hospital. One more patient was placed on a ventilator for a total of 43. Patients. Now, 100 patients remain in the intensive care unit. 141 new COVID-19 cases were reported along with two new deaths. Health officials say they are closely watching the numbers as we near the two-week mark since Labor Day. But it's still too early to tell how the holiday will impact Bear County. The feud between President Donald Trump and the nation's top health experts continues. Leaders in the medical community are now coming to the CDC director's defense after the president said Dr. Robert Redfield was confused about a coronavirus vaccine timeline. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest from Washington. 
This morning, new fallout for the CDC after the agency allegedly released coronavirus testing guidance without any scientific review. The guidance, widely criticized after it was released last month, said patients without symptoms should not get tested for COVID even if they were exposed to someone who is infected. Let me tell you right up front that the new guidelines are a CDC action. According to an email obtained by the New York Times, Trump administration officials at the Health and Human Services Department rewrote that guidance despite warnings from doctors to actually ramp up testing. This after CDC Director Robert Redfield goes back and forth with President Trump over the effectiveness of masks as well as a timeline for a vaccine. I think we're probably looking at third, late second quarter, third quarter, 2021. No, we want to go immediately. The nation's top medical experts are backing Redfield's estimate. You're not going to be able to vaccinate the entire population all at once. And Joe Biden says he will trust the scientists, not the president. The president who, by his own admission, downplayed the threat of the virus, leaving a staggering number of Americans to die. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is facing new criticism after recently uncovered memos revealed the White House allegedly blocked a proposal from the Postal Service to send 650 million disposable masks to American households back in April. And now parts of the country are seeing new setbacks in the push to reopen. In New York City, schools have again postponed in-person classes. In Wisconsin, an outbreak is forcing nearly 120 students into quarantine, and the country as a whole is still seeing up to 1,000 deaths each day. And now the World Health Organization is warning that Europe may already be seeing the start of a second wave. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. In your other morning headlines, President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden both on the campaign trail last night. Now the race for the White House escalates as early in-person voting and absentee voting begins today in several states. Most mail-in ballot application deadlines are in October. It's a process the Trump administration has repeatedly blasted making claims of voter fraud, but there is greater interest in absentee and mail-in ballots nationwide this year due to COVID-19, and some fear the fraud claims could lead to problems. A federal judge is promising to block changes made by the post office that have slowed down mail delivery. A coalition of state attorneys general filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Postal Service last month. It claims Postmaster General Louis DeJoy broke the law when he made those changes. The suit also says the changes could disenfranchise voters who cast their ballots by mail. DeJoy, who was appointed by the president, says he isn't trying to sabotage the election. He suspended some of the changes until after the election in the midst of the lawsuit. The judge's injunction will be enforceable nationwide. The obesity rate in the U.S. has hit a new record. That's according to the nonprofit Trust for America's Health. Report states the U.S. adult obesity rate now stands at 42.4 percent. That's the first time it's passed the 40 percent mark. Report found the rate of childhood obesity is also on the rise. Latest data shows 19.3 percent of those from two years to 19 years old are obese. Obesity comes with serious health consequences, including an increased risk of COVID-19 complications. And time now is 438 and 72 degrees. So ahead on GMSA, summer vacations may be over, but now may be the time to plan your fall getaway. We'll tell you about some travel deals still available. Plus, the Dallas Cowboys getting ready to host the Atlanta Falcons. We're going to have a preview. And outside with live cam. Yeah, I'm really curious as to what Mike Osterage has up his sleeve as we go into next week. He has definitely piqued our interest. We'll find out coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. As if the Cowboys offensive line doesn't have enough problems, now there's this. Seven-time Pro Bowler Tyron Smith did not practice yesterday due to a neck injury. He's battled both neck and back injuries in his 10-year NFL career, and the Cowboys are hoping history does not repeat itself. At first, the Cowboys said they'd be limiting their attendance to 25% capacity during Sunday's game against the Falcons, but now the Cowboys say seating capacity hasn't been determined and may not be till the weekend. Uh, Governor Abbott has said earlier that stadiums will be limited to 50% capacity, so we'll just have to see when kickoff happens on Sunday at noon. Meanwhile, Houston Texans will host the Baltimore Ravens this Sunday at Energy Stadium with no fans in the stands. Randall Cobb will be suiting up in just his second game as a member of the Texans. Cobb, who came to the Texans from the Cowboys, was only targeted three times in his debut, catching two for just 20 yards. 
The Texans lost 34-20 to the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. Kickoff against the Ravens will be Sunday at 3:25. After giving Jeff Trailer his first ever win as a college football coach in UTSA's dramatic 51-48 victory against the Texas State Bobcats, UTSA Roadrunners will try and give him his first home win against uh, his alma mater, Stephen F. Austin. Not only did Trailer play football for the Lumberjacks starting in 1986, he received two degrees from the college located in Nacogdoches and met his wife there as well. The game kicks off Saturday at 2 o'clock in the Alamo Dome. Go Jacks. Sorry, uh, I had to say it. <laughs> I was going to ask That's you. my school. 443, <laughs> yeah. 72 degrees. And still ahead, pesticides can make even the best fruits and vegetables unhealthy. We're going to tell you which ones are the safest and which ones to avoid. And next, why now may be the best time to find travel deals on a fall getaway. In this morning's GMA First Look, already thinking about holiday travel? Well, you're not alone. Enticing deals for would-be travelers round trip to Miami from anywhere. Just over 100 bucks, Seattle to Chicago, 90. And with the holidays just around the corner, those deals may stick as people cancel their big trips. We're seeing airfare being cut across the board for travel, not only six, nine, ten months down the road, but also for travel tomorrow. People are interested in holiday travel, but experts say they aren't committing just yet. Since last minute tickets are so cheap, many are waiting to book those trips. Without those business travelers, the airlines don't have as many people that they could potentially uh, get extra money from from last minute bookings. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know to stay safe and save money before you plan that holiday trip. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosar-Rabdi, ABC News, New York. Pesticides and produce, fruits and veggies are some of the healthiest foods we can eat, but they come with pesticide residues, some more than others. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz, with which ones are the safest and which ones you may want to buy organic. You know fruits and veggies are good for you, but before you pick your produce, consider this. Consumer Reports analyzed five years of government data on tests of produce and pesticides. A lot of times, even when pesticides are found on produce, the levels aren't worrisome. But in a few cases, our experts did find that the amounts exceeded what we consider to be safe. Industry groups say pesticide residue on food does not pose a risk, but some research has linked long-term low-level exposure to cognitive development, ADHD, and even cancer. The solution isn't to eat less fresh produce, most people already don't get enough, but to make smart choices. So apples to zucchini. Consumer Reports rated 35 fruits and veggies for pesticide risk. We broke down our ratings ranging from excellent all the way to poor. We recommend you try to buy fruits and vegetables that are rated excellent, very good, or good. A lot of non-organic produce fell into those categories like broccoli, carrots, tomatoes, sweet potatoes, and onion. But others got poor scores. Among the worst, fresh green beans, potatoes, fresh spinach, and peaches. For those, Consumer Reports recommends you buy organic if possible, especially for pregnant women and young children. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Food for thoughts. Yes, more to think about, definitely. 448, and I, I, I'm looking at a man that has an update on the roads right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> busy this morning for sure. So we're still dealing with this accident here. This is going to be Old Seguin Road at FM 78 there on the far east side. We're also dealing with this construction eastbound I-10 West at Camp Bullis Road. The eastbound lanes of I-10 are closed down. All traffic has to exit Camp Bullis Road to continue on eastbound I-10. This major accident, which happened early in the morning on southbound I-35 South at South Loop 1604. The southbound lanes of 35 are completely closed down. Everyone has to exit 1604 east or west there. All right, taking a look at Trans Guy 37 at Southeast Military. Not a car on the roadway looking good. 37 at Hackberry looking smooth. That looks great as well. And I-10 at Colorado. Ah, no one there right now on the roadway. So if you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. Thank you very much, Nick. Yeah, it was very quiet. I-10 Colorado. <laughs> yeah, no, not a car not, on the road. Not a soul <laughs> out there. Mike, good morning. Good morning. We have got, uh, I think, a nice afternoon. It's going to be a little bit warm, and then tomorrow's going to be just spectacular. Then after that, things are going to get uh, 
potentially interesting around here. Mm. Nice view of downtown. Uh, it's a little bit cooler or a little bit lower temperature starting off this morning than we were at this time the past couple of mornings. So we're down in the low 70s right now, mid 60s in parts of the hill country and humidity I think is low enough to let us drop down. I'm going for 70 when it's all said and done this morning. So going back to yesterday, yes, we had kind of the first big wave of rain that moved on through here. Then the next wave moved on through late in the afternoon. And yeah, it was just delightful seeing all that rain. If you did end up finally getting some, and a lot of folks did get some rain yesterday. Uh, radar right now, nothing in the immediate vicinity. Those are just some areas of clutter right around the radar sites. But then you look down to the southeast and into the Gulf of Mexico, and here's some of this rain. Some of this, and as you can see, <clears throat> excuse me, even down uh, in the kind of extreme southwest corner of our viewing area, moving across the river in toward Mexico, a couple of those showers. And that's pretty much what this uh, rapid update computer model is depicting that throughout the morning, not much really going on. And then as we go into the early afternoon hours, yeah, there's going to be a couple of these showers. The majority of it will be further down to the south and to the southwest and being pulled down there. So one or two showers are possible today, but not very likely. I think we'll see more uh, sunshine around here. And this rain, like I said off the top of the show, arguably is kind of the extreme leading northern edge of this system down here in the Gulf. Same one. Earlier on in the week, we had a couple of showers and there was this little disturbance here, which had looked like it was going to just sort of fizzle on out. Well, it decided to stay in the Gulf of Mexico and it has continued to gain strength. So 35 mile per hour winds as of right now. That's the latest update on this. It is Tropical Depression 22. More than likely, it's going to become Tropical Storm Willard or Wilford, pardon me, and it will continue kind of moving up to the north northeast and then make a dog leg turn to the west as we go through the day tomorrow, become a category one storm. And then as it moves in toward the coast, now the latest update was having it kind of scooch up to the north once again. But again, everything is still uh, there's nothing written in stone as far as this is concerned. There is somewhat of a consensus in some of the uh, spaghetti computer models coming in here, but some of them, I mean, one has it going up in toward New Orleans. One has it making a big loop to loop through here. The others have it kind of moving on in. So this is still one of those wait and see type situations. But as of right now, based on this information, we are going to be getting uh, some rain starting to move into the picture by late on Sunday and the first part of next week. Today, 86 degrees at noon, partly cloudy sky guys. One or two showers around the area today. Not very likely though. 90 for a high temperature. So it is going to be uh, once again seasonably warm. That's about the normal high this time of year. And then tomorrow we are going to be uh, <laughs> experiencing just a delightful day 65 starting off 85 in the afternoon really nice Sunday morning 63 as it's looking right now and consensus on a couple of different computer models that clouds move in during the day on Sunday we'll start to see some rain developing along the coast and then moving inland late Sunday overnight into Monday and Tuesday and as of right now some pretty good rain Monday and Tuesday and then moving on out of here but again a lot is going to be changing. This is still what three days away at least two, three days away. So things can change between now and then. OK, so the wrinkle you're teasing is that the unknowns with this system in the Gulf, right? Right. Okay. There's there's still no exact path of it as of yet. And you saw that mm -hmm. that cone of uncertainty. I mean, yeah. that's all it's, the way from Mexico to Louisiana. Yeah, those where those thing can go. That's spaghetti's everywhere, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. Right now we're at five or rather four fifty three seventy two degrees and coming up an update on the new Batman movie starring Robert Pattinson after it was halted due to COVID-19. Filming for The Batman has resumed and the Emmys are the latest awards to be changed by the pandemic. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. The Emmys are going to look a little different this year thanks to the pandemic. The nominees will all be at home, live, ready to accept their statues if they win. That's over 100 different feeds coming in, and host Jimmy Kimmel says it could be pretty chaotic. It's getting grandma to look at the camera, get her whole face on camera. Multiply that by like a million, and that's what we're dealing with here. The Emmys air Sunday night on ABC. 50 years ago today, we lost a legendary guitarist. Jimi Hendrix single-handedly revolutionized the sound of the electric guitar during his short life, releasing only three albums, but those works and his iconic stage performances made him one of the most influential musicians of all time. Hendrix died of an accidental drug overdose in London. He was 27. Any of this mean anything to you? 
The Batman is back. The latest movie up in filming again after shutting down earlier this month when star Robert Pattinson reportedly tested positive for COVID-19. The movie's due out October 2021. And actress and talk show host Jada Pinkett Smith with a birthday today, she's 49. While Ted Lasso star Jason Sudeikis is 45. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's a funny guy. <laughs> yes, he is. 457, 73 degrees on your Friday. And still ahead in our next half hour, President Donald Trump holds a late night rally in Wisconsin where he went after Joe Biden on various issues. And you probably have heard the dating app Tinder, but just ahead in Tech Bites, we'll tell you about the new dating site for pets called Tinder. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, early voting already getting underway today. Now that Election Day 2020 is less than two months away. The City Council approving a $7 million increase in the San Antonio Police Department's budget. We will have the details. Outside with live cam, Mike says we're going to lose some of the humidity going into the weekend, but all eyes again on the Gulf of Mexico and what could be a very interesting situation. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is September 18th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. But for now, I'm very happy that I saw rain yesterday. It was almost like an event, you know, at the house. Like, hey, everybody, let's look outside. <laughs> Mike, one of those uh, mini cold fronts, those outflow boundaries, blew through, knocked over a dog bowl, wound up upright. And I think that thing wound up with what appeared to be three to four inches of water <laughs> in it in one downpour. Yeah, now the airport didn't record that much rain yesterday, less than a tenth of an inch. But in some areas, you know, in your backyard, it was my it was it was coming down in gangbusters. Yeah, I was so. less than 10 miles north of the airport when I got this downpour. Yeah, and uh, we'll see a couple of showers today. Nothing like that, though, yesterday. I mean, if you get a, a, a decent one popping up here and there, but the rain chances are not that great. We're really kind of dying down, but they're going to be coming back up going into next week. 73 degrees right now, 64 out in uh, Kerrville. The humidity, dew point 67. You, that's not bad when you step outside. We don't have much of a heat index to deal with as of right now. Now, as far as the aquifer, uh, it went down a little bit, should be benefiting from some of the rain that we had yesterday. And as the allergens, moderate amounts, fall, elm, ragweed, as well as mold. OK, take a look in the Gulf of Mexico and we've got that system down there. This is the same one from earlier in the week that uh, produced a couple of showers well down to the south. And this thing is starting to brew. It's been sort of uh, just wobbling around down here and now it is what it's looking at as of right now that it is going to have a pretty good impact on us as we go in toward late in the weekend and then the first part of next week. I'm going to show you all the tracks and everything like that and some of the forecast models coming up a little bit later on in long weather. 73 right now in town as I mentioned that's the, the heat index so it doesn't really feel any warmer than what the actual air temperature is. Humidity is Okay, not bad, like I said, when you step outside. So partly cloudy this morning, and there's nothing on radar as of right now. A couple of showers are possible today, partly cloudy skies. We're going to make it up to right around 90 later on, and then tomorrow, absolutely beautiful. We get a little shot of dry air coming on in here. <clears throat> Pardon me. And temperature is going to be right around mid-80s. Good start in the morning. Great Sunday morning. Coolish, pleasant. Go outside in the backyard and drink some coffee. Then things look like they're going to be starting to change late on Sunday. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Solis, anything big going on, sir? Well, one accident that we had on FM 78 and Old Seguin Road is now cleared up. That's good news there. But we do have con some construction still. This is eastbound I-10 West at Camp Bullis Road. Now, the eastbound lanes of I-10 are closed down. You cannot continue on eastbound 1604 past Camp Bullis. You're going to have to exit Camp Bullis Road and continue continue that way. We're also dealing with this closure here. This is a major accident from earlier in, in the morning. Southbound I-35 at South Loop 1604. The southbound lanes of 35 are completely closed down. You're going to have to exit 1604 east or west to continue on your route. Um, that's just how it is. Transgate, tra Transguide is trying to update me when this is going to open back up, but no time frame as of right now. All right, here's that construction here. This I-10 at Lock and Terra there. There's a Campbellist exit. Everyone's exiting there to continue eastbound on I-10. All right, Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you very much, sir. Now to the race for the White House. Just 46 days until Election Day, but some Americans are already voting. President Donald Trump and Joe Biden are both heading to Minnesota today, where early voting for November's election begins this morning. ABC's Kenneth Moten has more. 
President Trump holding a late night rally in Wisconsin, attacking former Vice President Joe Biden. The man is incompetent. He's been there for 47 years. He didn't do a thing. The president is aiming to boost rural turnout in the battleground state, speaking to a mostly massless crowd in an airport hangar in Mosini, a city of fewer than 4,000 people. What we've done in a very, very short period of time is what nobody thought. And we came in and we did it and we did it for you. Now we have to get four more years to cement it and to do additional things, including tax cuts. They're going to raise your taxes. The president's rally comes as Wisconsin sees a spike in coronavirus cases. In stark contrast, Biden last night holding a drive-in town hall in Pennsylvania. Voters in cars parked behind Biden listening on FM radio. Both the audience members and the vehicle socially distant as Biden took questions in his native Scranton. Chief, didn't I meet you when you were chief? Uh, we did, sir. That's what I pleasure. thought. Good Looking you. at you like I know, I know. <laughs> Good evening, Vice President evening. Biden. Biden acknowledging he's benefited from white privilege, but also saying he's faced unfair treatment of his own during his working class upbringing. We're used to guys who look down their nose at us. We look to people who look at us and think that we're suckers. Look at us and they think that we don't, we, we're not equivalent to them. If you didn't have a college degree, you must be stupid. If in fact you didn't get to go to an Ivy school. Biden blasted Trump saying the president should step down because of how he's handled the pandemic. This is all about one thing, the stock market. He doesn't want to see anything happen. It's all about his reelection. It should be about the American people. And they're in trouble. And now another former member of the Trump administration turning against the president. Olivia Troy, who served on the coronavirus task force as Vice President Pence's advisor, tells The Washington Post Trump has a flat out disregard for human life. Before leaving for Wisconsin, the president reacting to Troy's comments. I have no idea who she is. I don't met her. I never met her to the best of my knowledge. Maybe she was in a room. I have no idea who she is. She doesn't know me. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, the San Antonio Police Department will get a bump in next year's budget. That's after City Council approved a $7 million increase in the department's 48, I'm sorry, $486.5 million budget. It's after some activists tried to defund police. Local activists say they're disappointed by the council vote. They were hoping the funds taken from police could go towards other community services. But they say their resolve to make change happen is now turned towards October 2021 contract negotiations between the city and the San Antonio Police Officers Association. We're asking for is accountability in the police department and transparency in the police department. We're asking to get rid of bad cops, not good cops. And so we believe that they voted against us because they felt that if they voted for us, that would be an attack on the police department when that there's nothing further than the truth. Police Officers Association President Mike Helley issued a statement applauding the city's budget approval. He added that the radical movement to defund police is now turning its focus to collect signatures to repeal the collective bargaining rights. He said, quote, City Council and the people of San Antonio should make no mistake. This repeal movement is just one more way to defund police, end quote. The city hopes a new interactive website will get people talking about mobility in San Antonio. The goal is to improve safety for everyone on the roadways. That includes drivers, bicyclists, walkers, and even those who ride e-scooters. People can provide input and feedback by using the map and sharing their experiences. The city of San Antonio will use the information collected to develop a bicycle implementation plan for downtown and midtown. Um, we're going to be looking at key corridors that are that the public has helped us to identify that connect some of our existing bike infrastructure. Um, so we're looking at connectivity. We're looking at where are people riding today? What are some places that connect some of our underserved communities? The city also launched an online survey to develop a micro mobility policy. This is for people who walk, bike or use e-scooters, but anyone can do the survey. Both the map and survey are available until September 30th. We will have a link to the map and survey on our website at kset.com. Not done yet. Council members also approved a new funding plan for the Edwards Hawk for Protection program. The eighth of a cent sales tax funded the program for decades, but the tax is expected to expire next year. City and VIA officials have put different uses for the taxes on November's ballot. So now the council has agreed on a plan to mostly borrow $100 million over 10 years to keep the aquifer protection program up and running.
time now, 509 and 73 degrees for now. Still ahead, if you're wanting to get your pre-order in for Sony's new PlayStation 5, you may be out of luck for now. Plus. From a retail store, a bike shop, and even a cafe on its campus. How one transitional special needs school is helping those students achieve their life goals. I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA, how the program's doing it amid a pandemic. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 73 degrees and yay, a lot of us got rain yesterday. Very nice, very nice. And also looking forward to a nice weekend. We're gonna check in with Mike just ahead. The pandemic has hurt special needs students in our area who depend on routine and interaction. It's why Edgewood ISD's Burleson School for Innovation and Education has been working for several months to bring their students back on campus safely. Sarah Costa visited the transition program for graduated high school students to tell us how the school is helping those students succeed. When a special education student graduates from high school, that transition into the real world can be a little tough. But with Edgewood ISD's Burleson School for Innovation and Education, they help special needs students ages 18 to 21 make that transition easier and help them reach their life goals. We're just about supporting them through this bridge and process until they're you know, be able to become independent and as independent as they can and as they want to be. With the help of several grants and a partnership with Texas A&M San Antonio, the school provides several on-site job opportunities for students that help prepare them for the real world. A student-run cafe helps them learn how to use a cash register and provide customer service. So does their student-run second-hand boutique. A graphic t-shirt print shop and a bike repair shop help them gain niche work skills. And this outdoor garden is not just a place to relax, but teaches them how to grow and take care of plants. But when the pandemic hit, all this came to a screeching halt. Students have been off campus since March. They've struggled with just having a place that they really love going, which is not available to them for so long. So we're excited that now we can offer that. But the students are now back on campus with a lot of preparations and changes made. The 18 plus transition coordinator Sarah Miner says it's been several weeks of virtually getting students used to wearing a mask all day and talking them through what the school year will look like with the pandemic. This is what the facility looks like. This is where you will stand. Um, and this is how you will work safely um, while you're in the, on the campus. The program is taking several social distancing precautions. We'll have less students in the classroom or workspace, and even some of the job sites have changed gears. Like the t-shirt print shop now prints their social distancing signs. So right now we have a young man that has a machine at home with him, and he's printing for us remotely, and we're picking up. So the work's continuing, which is pretty cool. This year, students will spend anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half here at the Edgewood Inspiration Gardens, whether that's them working on their iPads at the picnic tables or watering and taking care of plants. One thing that hasn't changed, the amount of effort the staff puts in to make sure the students succeed. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 515, 73 degrees. Still ahead, we're going to tell you about a brand new dating app built exclusively for pets. Here's to the doers. To all the people who realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Talk to your asthma specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. 
In today's Tech Bites, TikTok reportedly going after an Instagram co-founder to lead its company. Reports say TikTok has approached billionaire Kevin Systrom to be the CEO of the company as it works out a deal with Oracle over its U.S. operations. Systrom and another man launched Instagram in 2010. They sold it to Facebook for a billion dollars just two years later. You had to move really, I mean really fast if you wanted to pre-order Sony's new PlayStation 5. Retail sites taking pre-orders for the new console were sold out in seconds. Many later turned up on eBay with enormous markups. The PlayStation 5 goes on sale November 12th. Finally, humans have Tinder, and now pets wanting some four-legged companionship have Pinder. Owners can swipe left or right on pet profiles to find a possible match, then work out the details for meeting up with the pet's human. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Now you got to worry about, you know, is it a recent picture of the dog or is it or have they have they changed since that right. was taken? That yeah, kind of thing. so many things to worry about. I was mm -hmm. going to say my I was like, oh, my dog Gordo can get on a dating game. But all Gordo is going to care about is like, does the dog come with a steak <laughs> next to them? Well, <laughs> you, you play your cards right. Gordo can have dinner, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see uh, the things we worry about at 520 in the morning. But uh, <laughs> let's see if traffic is not one of them. Anything to worry about out there on the roads right now, Nick? No, right now things are looking uh, good on the east side, but right now on the far west side, we have a brand a new accident. It's going to be West Loop 1604 North at Wiseman Boulevard. Now, this is, is involving two vehicles. They're on the shoulder there. It's, it's requiring a wrecker, so please be careful if you're going northbound uh, Loop 1604 just past Wiseman Boulevard. All right, here we go. We got construction right now. This is eastbound IH10 at Camp Bullis Road. Now, Eastbound I-10 is closed down once again, and all traffic to continue on eastbound I-10 has to exit Camp Bullis Road. Keep that in mind if you're heading that direction. This major accident here we had, this has been here since early morning hours. Uh, it has closed down all of southbound IH-35 just before South Loop 1604. If you are heading southbound on 35, you're going to have to exit east or west on 1604. All right, Transguide uh, 35 at FM 1103, a little bit of construction there. Here's that construction here at 10 at La Quintera, uh, where they're making uh, traffic divert to Campbellis and 35 at 1103 again. And there's the accident 1604 in Wiseman there. So just keep that in mind if you're heading in that direction. We had some beautiful rain yesterday and even a couple of rainbows. And I love the caption. Look at the weird beam of light coming out of the uh, third brake light there on the back of that uh, truck with that little rainbow there. Great shot. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. Nothing going on as of right now. We had some, you know, beautiful rain around yesterday afternoon, as I mentioned. And the air is now very, very dry upstairs in the atmosphere, especially. I mean, this is bone dry air out here, well out to the west. And so that's not obviously really conducive to getting any rain, although we do have a small chance for uh, a couple of showers around here later on today. We're going to get a nice little uh, dose of some drier air coming in in the afternoons or for tomorrow as well as on Sunday. And so therefore it's going to be really pleasant tomorrow. Nice in the morning, great in the afternoon, beautiful Sunday morning. Then things are going to be changing and the humidity is going to come back up a little bit in the uh, first part of the week next week as we start to see more moisture coming in here from the Gulf with this system out there. So here's the very latest numbers on it. 35 mile per hour sustained winds. It gets up to 39. It will become a tropical storm Wilfred and the forecast has it moving off basically to the north northeast becoming a tropical storm by later on today. Then during the day tomorrow, it makes that turn almost straight to the west becomes a category one hurricane by Sunday and going into Monday, it would still be just a category one storm. Now, long range, longer range computer models going into Tuesday have it then making another right hand turn moving up to the north. So even though it looks like it would be coming at us, it would make that right hand turn. But again, look at the cone of uncertainty. This goes from Louisiana down to Mexico. So really anywhere in there as of right now, and we're going into Tuesday, so that's what a good four days away. So things can definitely change with this. This is not written in stone. We got to emphasize that this is not written in stone as of right now. So here's another look at some of the uh, spaghetti computer models. And yeah, there is some consensus with this left hand turn and then wanting to veer up to the right a little bit. But some models, I mean, look at this one takes it just straight up in toward New Orleans without even any variation. So you got to just kind of wait and see. Obviously, we're going to be monitoring this situation for the next couple of days. Here's a long range as far as rain concerned. This computer model 
We do have some rain again, a scattered shower to today. Tomorrow, nothing Sunday. Then the clouds move in and by the afternoon we start to see some rain moving in here along the uh, the coastal plain overnight into Monday. Pretty good chance for some rain, but notice how the brunt of this would be staying well off to the east of us. And this is kind of buying into that, making that turn back up to the north. So again, got to emphasize Nothing is written in stone as of yet with that system. 86 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today up to 90, about where it should be. Humidity, okay, and a shower or two is possible today. Tomorrow's going to be just fantastic. We start off mid-60s, lower humidity, plenty of sunshine. Beautiful start Sunday morning. Clouds move in here, and as of right now, based on the information right now, we will have some rain moving in later on in the day. Sunday, overnight, Monday, Tuesday. And that's really going to hold temperatures down. Then things will start to clear on out by the middle of next week. Well, between the year and Mother Nature, 2020 remains um, interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if this does become Wilfred, and if there's any more after that, you start in, we move over to the Greek alphabet to wow. name storms. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> 525, 73 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, it's a beautiful day for you two fans. A first look as the iconic band relaunches its official YouTube channel. Plenty of music news today from one band's classic tracks to a superstar's back catalog and more. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. It's a beautiful day for U2 fans. Friday, the iconic band is relaunching its official YouTube channel with weekly releases of remastered material. It's beginning with a premium 4K version of Stuck in a Moment You Can't Get Out Of, premiering at noon Eastern. Eventually, the channel will feature the band's entire music video catalog remastered in HD. Is it going to be a little different? Yeah. Is it going to be fantastic? Yes! Jim Brickman fans can attend his holiday comfort and joy tour without leaving home. Every night between Thanksgiving and Christmas, the musician will perform virtual tour dates, benefiting theaters in various communities. Different ticket packages include a stocking with a show program and other gifts, a Zoom room to watch and chat with other fans, even a virtual after party with Brickman. Info at jimbrickman.com. This is the man who started the journey. And we're still together after 53 years. Elton John has gone through more than half a century of his work with Bernie Taupin and come up with Elton Jewel Box, which Universal Music is billing as the ultimate exploration into Elton's extensive back catalog. The set includes nearly 150 songs, many previously unheard and unreleased, on eight CDs with a hardback book, three different LP collections, and digital and streaming formats. Elton Jewel Box arrives November 13th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Approaching 530, 73 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, Election Day 2020 is less than two months away now, and today some early voting is already getting underway. Looking for an easy dinner dish this weekend? We'll show you how to make one that's become a tradition for many families. It is Friday, the 18th of September. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Looking forward to a beautiful weekend. I, I love to hear low humidity. Me too, but we're also keeping an eyes on what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico. Mike says things could get interesting around here. Could. Yeah, a beautiful weekend for, let's say, three-fourths of the weekend. And then things will start to uh, change a little bit later on. And this is the uh, the latest out of there with tropical depression number uh, 22. I want to adjust something very quickly on my maps here. But what you can see from this is, take away from it, notice the, the blue line right there. That's the path that this thing has taken so far, which it's all over the place. And that's because its movement is not that that well defined as of yet. So that's what is really kind of throwing a little bit of a wrench into the works as far as uh, what's going to be happening. And that's why the confidence as far as where it's going and exactly when is still very low and things are gonna be changing a lot over the next couple of days. This is what it looks like outside right now. And as you can see, Lights aren't bad. That's kind of the uh, the visual gauge as far as humidity is concerned. We've got uh, 73 degrees here in town. Kelly 72 pretty consistent. A little bit closer to normal. Still not down there. Should be at 69 degrees right now for a normal low temperature. Mold, fall elm, ragweed are all on the moderate side this morning. And later on today, 86 at noon, 90 high temperature right around normal. 
a little bit of a chance of rain. I mean, one or two showers out there. That's probably going to be the extent of it. Northeasterly wind 10 to 15 may get breezy at times. And then tomorrow, absolutely fantastic day. Sunday, as of right now, we are going to start to see some clouds, maybe some rain from Tropical Depression number 22. Will it become a tropical storm and the path it's going to be taking? We'll check that out coming up a little bit later on. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Salise. What's going on, Nick? Thanks, Mike. Right now, uh accident on 1604 Wiseman just cleared up, so this accident no longer there. That's good if you're heading northbound on 1604. We still have construction though, eastbound I-10 west at Camp Bullis. Remember, I-10 eastbound is closed down at Camp Bullis. All traffic has to exit Camp Bullis to continue eastbound on I-10. Now we're also uh, dealing with this still, this closure. Major accident southbound I-35 south at South Loop 1604. If you are headed 35 south right now, all traffic is being diverted to 1604 west or 1604 east due to this accident that has been there since about one in the morning. All right, outside right now, this is 10 at La Quintera there. There's the traffic being diverted to the Camp Bullis to continue eastbound on 1604. If you have to head this way and go to work this early, just keep, in, keep that in mind. Leave a little bit earlier because this access road could get a little clogged up as the, we approach the six o'clock hour. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Late breaking news. Firefighters on the scene of a house fire in Alamo Heights. This is happening on College Boulevard. Our Katrina Weber is live there now. Good morning, Katrina. Well, good morning. Uh, firefighters seem to have gotten the flames out of this two story home. Uh, they've been working on this fire for quite a while. I had a chance to talk with the homeowner. He says that uh, his father woke up to a noise around three o'clock or so and they smelled smoke in the house. So they went outside, looked around with a flashlight, didn't see anything. But when he went back inside the house, he says he could smell smoke coming out of the attic. And that appears that is where the fire started. You can still see a little bit of hazy smoke rising up from the top of this house. Firefighters have been here for quite a while pouring water on it. And uh, they just seem to be having a difficult time putting it completely out. Uh, that man and his father both got out of the house safely after they smelled the smoke in the attic. They said they got out, called the fire department, and then things just went from there. The house went up in flames. Uh, we don't know exactly the cause, but he believes it did start in the attic. Uh, and we had heard some talk about possible ammunition in the house possibly going off. Uh, firefighters were concerned about that, but it does not appear that there are any injuries here. We're waiting to get an update from the fire department to see exactly uh, what they found the cause of the fire to be and to see exactly what went on. Reporting live in Alamo Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Health officials say the number of hospitalizations due to COVID-19 is an important number to watch as Texas reopens. In regions where COVID-19 hospitalizations make up more than 15% of admissions, like the Rio Grande Valley, businesses will not be able to open up. For those who do fall under the threshold, businesses operating at 50% capacity can expand to 75% starting this Monday. Those businesses include retail stores, restaurants, offices, manufacturing plants, and museums. But Texas bars will remain closed. Many nursing homes and assisted living centers will also be allowed to get their first visitor in months. Starting next Thursday, visitation will be allowed to resume as well. And more money coming to San Antonio's COVID-19 Emergency Housing Assistance Program. City Council approving sending more than $24 million to help families struggling because of the pandemic. Program helps pay rent and other bills, as well as providing those qualified families with cash. The program already received nearly $51 million to distribute to residents. But that money is expected to run out by early October. Additional funds will come with more limits on how much assistance residents can get through the program. The process of picking a president is now officially underway. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, although November 3rd is still a while off, starting today, some people will start casting their votes. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden both on the campaign trail Thursday night. This is the most important election in the history of our country. I'm going to be America's president, not a Democratic president. I'm going to be a, I'm a Democrat, proud of it, but America's president. And now the race for the White House escalates as early in-person voting and absentee voting begin in several states. Most mail-in ballot application deadlines are in October. 
It's a process the Trump administration has repeatedly blasted, making unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud. Everyone knows mail-in ballots are a disaster. Oh, wait a minute. We just discovered 100,000 ballots. Every, every vote must be counted. Yeah, but we don't know where these freaking votes came from. Biden calls such comments an attempt to delegitimize the election. Look, if the president had even remote confidence he was likely to win the election. He wouldn't be doing this. But there's greater interest in absentee and mail-in ballots nationwide this year due to COVID-19, and some fear the fraud claims could lead to problems. We started 2020 seeing intense levels of voter suppression and voting discrimination, and that picture has been compounded by the pandemic. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And time now is 539. The man who created the iconic character Forrest Gump has passed away. The mayor of Fairhope, Alabama, says American novelist Winston Groom died Wednesday night. A cause of death has not been released. Groom wrote Forrest Gump. The book went on to become a movie in 1994, winning six Academy Awards. Alabama's governor tweeted about Groom's passing, saying, saddened to learn that Alabama has lost one of our most gifted writers. He was 77. Qantas Airlines offering flights to nowhere during the pandemic. The Australian airline offering a seven-hour scenic joy ride around Australia for people who just miss flying. And you don't take a, you don't get off the plane at all. Believe it or not, demand is high. Tickets sold out in just 10 minutes. The plane is a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, one usually reserved for international travel. The beauty of the flights, Qantas says, there's no passport or quarantine re required. What? Yeah. <laughs> Just get out of the house. Go take a little flight around the continent. No. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe for some people, not me. Yeah, and I think the prices, were, it, was, it wasn't bad for what they were doing. I think it was like 350 U.S. dollars, wow. roughly. I guess mm -hmm. it could be fun for some people. <laughs> for some people. 540, 73 degrees. And still ahead, Walmart employees could be getting a much-needed raise. We're going to tell you when. Outside with live cam, Mike is keeping an eye on that system churning in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we're trying to get a better idea where it might go and when. He's keeping track. Coming up. Welcome back. It's 543. In your morning consumer headlines, Papa John's is moving and setting up shop in Georgia. The pizza chain announced that it's moving much of its operations from Louisville, Kentucky, to a new global headquarters in Atlanta. Papa John's president, Rob Lynch, cited Atlanta's airport as a key reason for the move. It will allow the company to connect to both domestic and international markets. 165,000 hourly workers at Walmart will be getting a pay raise ahead of schedule. The big box retailer says it's introducing a new new team-based operating model for its super centers that come with higher pay. The new wage system uh, ranges rather from our team members starting between 18 to 21 dollars an hour and can go up to 30 dollars an hour in super centers. The idea provide cross training as well as new opportunities for leadership and career growth. The pay raises take effect in October. They replace the annual increases employees usually had to wait to get in February or in April. And time now is 544 and 73 degrees. We're going to tell you how to make an easy meal become a traditional dinner for many San Antonio families. 547, good news if you're looking for an easy dinner idea to make for your family this weekend. Our Eric Ednada shows us how to make a meal that has become a tradition for many families. <laughs> Arroz con pollo is a dish that I grew up loving, whether in my grandmother's kitchen, my mother's kitchen, and now my own kitchen. Here's an easy version of this recipe that anybody can make that's packed with flavor. First, add a little oil into your pot or skillet, then add one to two cups of white rice, depending on how many people you're cooking for. Next, brown the rice. Once it has some color to it, add water. Then add your seasonings. I use garlic powder, chopped onion flakes, ground comino, chicken bouillon, tomato bouillon or tomato sauce, and salt and pepper. Don't ask me for exact measures. I was always taught just put a little of this and a little of that until it's at the flavor you want. If you want to add some vegetables into your dish like peas and chopped carrot, you can add it here as well. Next, add the chicken. I use bone-in chicken, but chicken breast can be added as well. Then you cover and just let it cook at medium to low heat until the rice and chicken are cooked through, usually around 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how big of serving you are making. Once ready, serve immediately and add some beans or tortilla to complete the meal. 
For more on this recipe, just head to our website, kset.com. Erica Hernandez, Kset 12 News. And we're hungry. Yeah, I was going to say that looks good. Not fair, Erica, for <laughs> airing that right now when we're starving. I know. Looks like uh, good comfort food. Let's check traffic at 548. Here's Nick. Uh, thanks, Mark. Right now, still dealing with the same problems we had been all morning. Uh, no accidents, but some closures here. Remember, we got West uh, Loop. Well, this actually is clear, but we have eastbound I-10 at Camp Bullis. Uh, the main lanes of uh, eastbound I-10 still closed down. You're going to have to exit Camp Bullis to continue on eastbound I-10. And then to continue on southbound 35, you're going to have to exit east or west on South Loop 1604. It's still closed down due to this accident that we've had there since 1 in the morning. All right, Trans Guide uh, 10 at La Quintera. There is that construction there. Uh, that's where all the traffic is diverting to Camp Bullis Road. You got 35 in Weedner on the north side. That's flowing smoothly and looking good. 35 at 1103 looks great. 10 at Medical flowing smooth. And we'll do one more here. Let's see what we have. I-10 at Wurzbach on the northwest side looks good. So if you're heading to work pretty much anywhere in the inner city, northwest side, west side, expect to get there on time. Things look good right now and are flowing. Thank you, Nick. Last couple days, some of these downpours have been hard to miss. Yes, we got lucky. We got to watch it from our home, and I know a lot of people, even Mike, got rain this time around. Yeah, finally, uh, if you didn't get any rain on Wednesday, you got some yesterday, and look at this one. I mean, wow, that's a big old downpour, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that is extremely tiny, very, very kind of isolated, if you will, and that has been the situation, even though a lot of folks got them. It wasn't just this widespread rain. It was those, those pockets that moved on through here. Nothing going on as of right now and uh, nothing really showing up on radar at all. We had those showers that were moving from kind of northeast down to southwest throughout the afternoon yesterday and uh, throughout the rest of today. Again, not much. I mean, we had yesterday the best chance for some rain, and then today maybe a stray shower or two is going to be popping up by the early afternoon hours, perhaps into uh, mid-afternoon, and by dinner time, dinner time, pardon me, most everything would be kind of focused down to the south as well. And that's going to be the situation going into this evening. Then things will really start to uh, die off. We get a little shot of cooler air coming on in here. That is then going to, and drier air especially, that's going to help temperatures to drop down. Actually a little bit below normal the next couple of mornings, which is going to be very nice. And then tomorrow is going to be just sensational. Sunday starting off is going to be great as well. As I put it off at the top of this half hour, the initial path of this storm, you know, again, this thing was just kind of out here uh, earlier on in the week, produced a couple of showers uh, right around Brownsville, and then it just decided to kind of hang out here. And then the Hurricane Center started tracking it, but the movement has been very, very haphazard. And that's why the forecast or why the confidence in the, the forecast of it is kind of on the low side. So it is still going to be moving up to the north to northeast. And then throughout the day tomorrow makes this dog leg to the left becomes a category one storm. By the way, by later on today, it does look like it's going to become uh, Wilfred, the last of the using the regular alphabet name storms. After that, we're going to jump into the uh, Greek alphabet to name them. And then the forecast does have it moving in toward Texas and toward the coast, but then working its way up to the north. And I want to go back to this and just to point out the fact that the cone of uncertainty, that's this right here. Look at how wide that is. That extends all the way from well south into Mexico, well into Louisiana, anywhere in here. And so that's why, as of right now, you cannot put this in stone. It is not written in concrete at all. 86 degrees today, partly cloudy skies at noon. Couple of showers going to be popping up today. Very few and far between. If at all, most of those will be well down to the south and 90 for a high temperature. And then we get some dry air coming on in here. That allows temperatures to drop down mid 60s tomorrow. Beautiful start tomorrow. Great in the afternoon, 85 degrees that lower humidity. I think we start to see some rain move in here late in the day on Sunday. Uh, that based on the information right now would be the leading edge of that. Well, what would be Wilfred and then Monday overnight into Monday and Tuesday, we'd have a better chance for some rain around here. All right. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 553, 73 degrees and still has why play one video game starring an Italian plumber when you can play three up next. We're going to have a preview of Super Mario 3D All Stars. Real quick run through your lottery numbers. Pick three, one, seven, nine, Fireball eight, daily four, seven, seven, three, two, Fireball five, cash five, four, five, nine, 12, 28, and your Texas two step, 1, 4, 28, 32, 6.
Three classic Mario adventures are playable for the first time on the Nintendo Switch in Super Mario 3D All-Stars. <laughs> Those games are Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. But Nintendo has done something unexpected by making the set available for a limited time. Very interesting move for Nintendo to come out of the gate with uh, something that makes us all incredibly happy, including myself. I credit Super Mario 64 as a hugely influential game in my personal career because it really showed that games were about to explode in three dimensions. Even in the age of ubiquitous entertainment digital access, Nintendo says Super Mario 3D All-Stars will only be available until approximately March 31st of 2021. And these are games that in some way or another really changed the medium and changed the world around video games, and they deserve to be played and, and enjoyed for a multitude of reasons, but one of the most significant is their historical significance and their, and their sort of pop culture value. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Still ahead on GMSA, racism in the workplace is illegal, but can still happen far too often. We over, what, go over what you should do if you're facing racial, racial harassment on the job. That is coming up right here on GMSA. Transguide I-10 at Lock and Terra, 35 at FM 1103 and 1604 at Wiseman. Nick's going to be back with Time Saver Traffic. San Antonio City Council increasing SAPD's budget despite calls from protesters to defund the police. We'll hear how a local activist and the president of the San Antonio Police Officers Association is responding. And coming up, the feud between the president and the nation's top health experts on the coronavirus continues. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 72 degrees, not too bad. Looking forward to a beautiful weekend, but the rain might get interesting. We're going to check in with Mike. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Friday. It is September 18th. Yeah, we had more rain in the area yesterday. If you was saw a few more showers and thunderstorms, but this morning, I think the main headline is not only some changes for our weekend weather, but obviously a lot of activity in the Gulf of Mexico. I know, maybe as early as next week. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Yeah, I don't think we'll start really to see anything until probably late Sunday from that, but it's changed the weekend forecast just a bit, just because we start to see some clouds move in here. Well, tomorrow, though, is going to be fantastic, so we can just concentrate for the time being on today and tomorrow because we get some dry air that's going to be coming on in here. Right now, uh, uh, we've got temperatures down in the mid 60s in parts of the hill country. We're at 72 degrees and it's a little bit closer to normal. Normal low being 69. Humidity is OK this morning. So again, not bad out there. Mold, fall elm, ragweed are all on the uh, the moderate side and going through the forecast right now. I think we drop down maybe a couple of more notches in the next few hours and there is the small chance for a shower later on today, 86 degrees at noon, maybe a 20% chance to see a stray shower or two coming up here and a high temperature up to 90. Then we get the dry air starting to pump on in here and that's going to give us some beautiful weather again tomorrow as well as uh, throughout the day tomorrow as well as early Sunday. Then things will start to change. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, Officer Nick Solis and well, that just kind of jumps right off the map there. Yeah, a little closure there downtown, not affecting traffic too much, Mike. And good news, eastbound I-10 at Cambulis is now opened up. So that's smooth sailing there if you are heading eastbound from Bernie to 1604. Uh, that construction is no longer there anymore. All right, uh, this is oh, this closure. This is a major accident southbound I-35 south at South Loop 1604. This is an accident that happened at 1 in the morning, um, but it closed down the highway there. So if you are going southbound 35, you're going to have to exit west or east 1604 still at this time until this opens back up. All right, drive times eastbound 151, 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. So still really good times. You got time to get a taco or something. Things are looking good on 151 10 at Colorado. That's looking good. Still flowing very smoothly there. 10 at Wurzbach on the northwest side looks great. And uh, let's see what else we have here. We got 37 in Houston looking good. Mark Stephanie back to you. Thank you, sir. We're following late breaking news over in Alamo Heights. Firefighters currently on scene of a house fire. That's happening at College Boulevard and Woodway Lane. Our Katrina Weber is live with the latest information. Katrina. 
Well, good morning. Uh, just standing here watching them. It appears to be the, a very stubborn fire that firefighters are dealing with in this two-story house behind me. You can see they're still putting water on this thing uh, oh, three hours after the homeowner says it broke out. Uh, they have been focusing on the upper part of the house, those upper rooms, as well as the attic. The homeowner says he believes it did start in the attic of this home. He says the father heard a noise. Oh, we've got some flames flaring up again. We can see uh, here live on TV. Uh, the homeowner told me that his father heard a popping sound around 3 o'clock this morning. They went outside to look at the house from the outside with flashlights, didn't see anything. He came back inside, and that's when he noticed smoke coming from the attic area. They got out safely. Firefighters moved in, but this fire has been burning ever since, and obviously giving firefighters a tough time. They can't seem to put it out. And we did hear them talking about ammunition possibly in the house. I have not had a chance to talk to any of them about this because they've been busy uh, ever since we got here. But again, two people in the house when it broke out earlier this morning, they got out safely. The house may be a different story. Reporting live from Alamo Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The San Antonio Police Department will get $7 million more in funding after City Council approved the new budget yesterday. Local activist Farrell Clark says he is disappointed by the vote. He says he was hoping to see more funds transferred from the police budget to other community services. But now he is turning his focus to change the October 2021 contract negotiations between the city and San Antonio Police Officers Association. Clark says he wants the police to be held accountable for bad actions. Some city leaders agree supporting contract changes that would give the city more power to fire officers who break policy. We're asking for is accountability in the police department and transparency in the police department. We're asking to get rid of bad cops, not good cops. And so we believe that they voted against us because they felt that if they voted for us, that would be an attack on the police department when that there's nothing further than the truth. The San Antonio Police Officers Association President Mike Helly issued a statement applauding the city's budget approval. Helly also responded to Clark saying in part, quote, the city council and the people of San Antonio should make no mistake. This repeal movement is just one more way to defund police. More money will be allocated to the city's COVID-19 emergency housing assistance program. Our city council approving more than $24 million to help families struggling during the pandemic. Program helps tenants pay rent and utility bills, also gives qualifying families cash. Program already received $51 million in funding, but that's expected to run out by next month. However, there will be more limits on who can get assistance through the program. City Council also approved a new funding plan for the Edwards Aquifer Protection Program. The 1 8 cent sales tax will no longer fund the aquifer. Instead, the city will borrow $100 million over the next decade to keep the aquifer protection fund running. City and VIA officials have put a new proposal on the November ballot to use the sales tax in other areas. Local health officials reporting 141 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bear County. Mayor Ron Nierberg also says two more people have died from the virus. This says their seven-day rolling average has increased to 128 cases per day. Mayor Ron Nierenberg is also reminding people to follow COVID-19 safety guidelines after Governor Greg Abbott's announcement yesterday. The governor says most businesses can now increase capacity to 75% because of decreased hospitalization numbers. Some of those businesses include restaurants, gyms, retail stores, museums, and offices. However, bars are still not allowed to reopen. The governor says the new guidelines do not apply to the Rio Grande Valley, Laredo, and Victoria area. Well, the feud between the president and the nation's top health experts continues. Leaders in the medical community are defending CB CDC director Dr. Robert Redfield. It comes as a new report says the White House blocked the U.S. Postal Service from delivering masks to millions of Americans at the beginning of the pandemic. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Good morning. The nation's coronavirus death toll is nearing 200,000. And from a vaccine timeline to the effectiveness of masks, best practices against the virus are becoming ever more politicized. 
This morning, new fallout for the CDC after the agency allegedly released coronavirus testing guidance without any scientific review. The guidance, widely criticized after it was released last month, said patients without symptoms should not get tested for COVID even if they were exposed to someone who is infected. Let me tell you right up front that the new guidelines are a CDC action. According to an email obtained by the New York Times, Trump administration officials at the Health and Human Services Department rewrote that guidance despite warnings from doctors to actually ramp up testing. This after CDC Director Robert Redfield goes back and forth with President Trump over the effectiveness of masks as well as a timeline for a vaccine. I think we're probably looking at third, late second quarter, third quarter, 2021. No, we want to go immediately. And Joe Biden says he will trust the scientists, Everybody not the president. The president who, by his own admission, downplayed the threat of the virus, leaving a staggering number of Americans to die. And now parts of the country are seeing new setbacks in the push to reopen. In New York City, schools have again postponed in-person classes. In Wisconsin, an outbreak is forcing nearly 120 students into quarantine, and the country as a whole is still seeing up to 1,000 deaths each day. And now the World Health Organization is warning that Europe may already be seeing the start of a second wave. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, the city hopes a new interactive website will get people talking about mobility in San Antonio. The goal is to improve safety for everyone on the roads, from drivers and cyclists to walkers and e-scooter riders. People can give their thoughts on how they travel around the city by using the map and sharing their experiences. For example, if you think cyclists should have their own lane and not share the road, the city wants to know that. The information will help develop a bicycle implementation plan for downtown and midtown. Um, we're going to be looking at key corridors that are that the public has helped us to identify that connect some of our existing bike infrastructure. Um, so we're looking at connectivity. We're looking at where are people riding today? What are some places that connect some of our underserved communities? The city also launched an online survey to develop a micro mobility policy. This is for people who walk, bike or use e-scooters. Both the map and the survey are available until September 30th. We have a link to the map and survey on our website at kset.com. 610, 72 degrees. St. Mary's University holding a fundraiser today for its eSports program. We're going to hear from the head coach on why raising money will benefit the program's diversity and inclusion. Local school working to help special needs students amid the pandemic. We'll learn how they brought back students safely and why it's important to have special needs students in a classroom setting. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 72 degrees for now. If you didn't see rain yesterday, you might get a chance next week. We're going to check in with Mike after the break. When a special education student graduates from high school, that transition into the real world can be a little tough. But with Edgewood ISD's Burleson School for Innovation and Education, they help special needs students ages 18 to 21 make that transition easier and help them reach their life goals. We're just about supporting them through this bridge and process until they are you know, be able to become independent and as independent as they can and as they want to be. With the help of several grants and a partnership with Texas A&M San Antonio, the school provides several on-site job opportunities for students that help prepare them for the real world. A student-run cafe helps them learn how to use a cash register and provide customer service. So does their student-run second-hand boutique. A graphic t-shirt print shop and a bike repair shop help them gain niche work skills. And this outdoor garden is not just a place to relax, but teaches them how to grow and take care of plants. But when the pandemic hit, all this came to a screeching halt. Students have been off campus since March. They've struggled with just having a place that they really love going, which is not available to them for so long. So we're excited that now we can offer that. But the students are now back on campus with a lot of preparations and changes made. The 18 plus transition coordinator Sarah Miner says it's been several weeks of virtually getting students used to wearing a mask all day and talking them through what the school year will look like with the pandemic. This is what the facility looks like. This is where you will stand. Um, and this is how you will work safely um, while you're in the, on the campus. The program is taking several social distancing precautions. We'll have less students in the classroom or workspace and even
even some of the job sites have changed gears. Like the t-shirt print shop now prints their social distancing signs. So right now we have a young man that has a machine at home with him and he's printing for us remotely and we're picking up. So the work's continuing, which is pretty cool. This year, students will spend anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half here at the Edgewood Inspiration Gardens, whether that's them working on their iPads at the picnic tables or watering and taking care of plants. One thing that hasn't changed, the amount of effort the staff puts in to make sure the students succeed. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 616. Let's go ahead and check back with Nick. Uh, how is I-35 South looking? I-35 South is still closed down and then right near there, just west of there, we have another accident. It's going to be here westbound South Loop 1604 East at Campbellton Road. Well, actually, it looks like it's going to be eastbound um, on South Loop 1604 at Campbellton Road. So it uh, looks like there's a two vehicle accident. They're blocking one lane there and another vehicle's in the ditch. Very major accident. Hope it's going to cause some delays if you are heading eastbound South Loop 1604 at Campbellton. And this is what Steph was talking about here. This is southbound I-35 South at South Loop 1604. Now, I-35 is still closed down here due to this accident. You're going to have to exit 1604 east or west, but if you do that now, if you exit 1604 east, you're going to run into the accident I just said right, uh, earlier. So just expect a huge delay if you are in this area of the of town. All right, 10 at Lock and Terra looking good now. 1604 in Wiseman, we had an accident there earlier. That's looking great. 35 in Weedner Road running smooth and 10 in Medical. Ah, look at that. Flowing very smoothly for a Friday morning. All right, thank you, Nick. And Mike's here with a bus stop forecast and talk about a storm that could wind up taking the last name on the storm name list for the Atlantic season this year, yeah. officially. Right. Uh, you know, arguably some of those storms questionable whether they should have been named or not. But uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of water over the dam. But uh, we do have a very pleasant morning, a little bit of humidity out there. 70, uh, we're, I think, dropping down a couple of more degrees throughout the course of the next few hours. And then after school today, 90. A shower is possible today, not very likely though, and we'll start to see then later on some drier air coming on in here. So again, forecast high temperature today, uh, right around 90, maybe some low 90s. What's interesting though is then you look at this and it has the heat index at 89 degrees, which yes, if the air is dry enough, it can actually feel cooler because your body cools itself that much more efficiently when some dry air comes on in here. And that's what we are looking at. So we've got these uh, dew points that are in the 60s right now, which is okay, could be lower, and then they're going to be dropping down by later on late this afternoon and into this evening. So that much drier air and your body cools itself that much more efficiently, so it can actually feel cooler than the actual air temperature does. And that dry air continues to pump on in here. We're not going to see that much. You know, usually you have a little more humidity in the morning, uh, but that's not bad at all, and that's going to allow temperatures to be even cooler tomorrow morning, and dew points will continue to drop down throughout the day. And look at that, by Sunday morning, only in the low 50s, so it's going to be just a wonderful fallish morning on Sunday. Then things will start to change just a little bit. Of course, we had the beautiful rain around here yesterday. That all moved on out. There's a little bit showing up right now, arguably the extreme northern and northwestern portion of the storm, which is kind of brewing down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And again, this thing, that's the path. I mean, it's just kind of all over the place. There's no real, no real good uh, push for it or something to, to really guide it in one direction. So 35 mile per hour winds as of right now. Here is the kind of consensus in the latest update, taking it up to the north to northeast throughout the afternoon it would become Tropical Storm Wilfred. And then throughout the day tomorrow, it makes a kind of a left hand turn heading in toward southern portion of the state as a category one hurricane. That would continue on through the weekend, starting to push maybe some clouds and perhaps a little bit of uh, rain in here by later on Sunday. And then computer models have it, and this is the Hurricane Center's forecast making another right hand turns kind of paralleling the coast. But again, from Louisiana all the way down well south into Mexico, that's the cone of uncertainty. So this is still a hate to say it, a wait and see type situation. So because uh, when you look at some of the other computer models, uh, they're sort of all over the place. And that's why we just have to gonna have to watch and things will start to narrow down and can pinpoint this a little bit more as time goes on. Here's another computer model as far as rain goes. A couple of showers are possible basically in the first portion of the day today. 
Tomorrow is absolutely spectacular. And then Sunday, here's the clouds that move on in here and some of that rain, especially down here along the coast on Sunday. That would continue to push on in overnight Monday into Tuesday. But notice how the center of that storm stays there or the heaviest rain would be there along the coast working its way up. But again, everything is still um, if he as of right now, the confidence as far as the exact path of this is very low for the time being because we're still about, you know, two, three, even four days out as far as when it's really going to start to uh, potentially make an impact on us. 86 degrees today at noon, probably cloudy skies, maybe a shower middle of the afternoon, one or two of them here and there, primarily down to the south, 90 for a high temperature today. Drier air comes on in here. Spectacular tomorrow. Even more spectacular Sunday morning down in the low 60s. 85 tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine. Clouds move on in here. And based on the information right now, rain late Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then starting to taper off Wednesday. We are really looking forward to Saturday and Sunday morning. Yes, we are. I think that's described perfectly spectacular. Can't Sunday wait. Sunday morning, I mean, maybe even a Sweatshirt? Ooh, You're wow. Outside. Okay. How lucky we are. Maybe we should change our breakfast plans to outside tomorrow. Uh -huh. I think that'll be a great okay. idea, Mark. Good idea. 622, 72 degrees. And summer may be over. <laughs> <laughs> but many people are still looking to get away for fall. And there are a lot of travel deals still out there. We're going to tell you about it in today's GMA First Look. And we'd like to wish happy birthday to Addie. She's five years Aww. old today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. If you'd like to submit a birthday, head to ksat.com, upload a picture to include a name and age. We may show them right here on GMSA. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Macy's one day sale now through Sunday with deals priced so low you don't need a coupon. Like 30 to 50% off shoes, booties, and more. 40 to 60% off new looks. And 60% off select Effie Fine Jewelry. Plus contact free curbside pickup at Macy's. All right, I brought in Ensure Max Protein to give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein with nutrients to support immune health. At Stanley Steamer, we're ready when you are. Introducing new Voltaren Arthritis Pain Gel, the first and only full prescription strength, non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory gel available over the counter. New Voltaren is powerful arthritis pain relief in a gel. Voltaren, the joy of movement. In this morning's GMA First Look, already thinking about holiday travel? Well, you're not alone. Enticing deals for would-be travelers round trip to Miami from anywhere. Just over 100 bucks, Seattle to Chicago, 90. And with the holidays just around the corner, those deals may stick as people cancel their big trips. We're seeing airfare being cut across the board for travel, not only six, nine, 10 months down the road, but also for travel tomorrow. People are interested in holiday travel, but experts say they aren't committing just yet. Since last minute tickets are so cheap, many are waiting to book those trips. Without those business travelers, the airlines don't have as many people that they could potentially uh, get extra money from from last minute bookings. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what you need to know to stay safe and save money before you plan that holiday trip. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosar Rabdi, ABC News, New York. And competitive video gaming, otherwise known as eSports, is considered one of the fastest growing sports in the world. But some believe there's a lack of diversity in the sport. St. Mary's University launched their Rattler eSports program this year, but they hope to create more inclusion for black and Hispanic students. Head coach Caitlin Teniente says there are accessibility issues which are often associated with high costs of equipment and Internet. She says the university hopes to bridge that gap by providing scholarships for future students of color. A fundraising event will be held today at noon. And Caitlin Teniente says the scholarships are just one part to create diversity and equity. The idea is that these scholarships would, in turn, help us recruit that kind of student to bring them into the program. Need in this match, um, 
The university hopes to raise $5,000, which will go towards scholarships for future students. The event will be streamed live on the Rattlers eSports program Twitch feed, and you can find more information about it right now on KSET.com. In time, 628 and 72 degrees. Part of I-35 remains closed in the southbound lane, so Nick will tell you where. We'll get you updated on the uh, how bad of a backup that might be creating. And again, all eyes on the Gulf of Mexico for a system right now that could become a problem for parts of Texas in the coming week or so. Mike will have details coming up. Heights has been giving firefighters a tough time. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The good news, two people inside got out safely. I'll have more on that story. Joe Biden and President Donald Trump both on the campaign trail as early voting starts in some states. We're going to hear the messages each candidate is trying to send to prospective voters. Outside with live camp, 72 pleasant degrees out there. Mike says we're going to have a fantastic weekend in our local forecast, especially in the early morning hours. And of course, he's keeping an eye on what's happening down in the southern Gulf of Mexico. How exciting. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. It is September 18th. Let's go straight to Mike, get the latest mm -hmm. on how the weekend is looking overall. Overall, fantastic. I mean, like you said, the next couple of mornings are just going to be spectacular. Uh, today, we'll start to see some really dry air work its way on in here, and so it's going to be pleasant this afternoon and then even cooler tomorrow. Yeah, the weekend would, would just be great. So here's the latest. It is Tropical Depression number 22, and one thing got to emphasize is as far as the forecast is concerned, we're still two, three days away from this having really in, any impact on us. So a lot can change between now and then. There are so many different factors that are playing into this. So you can't take anything as being gospel as of right now. Right now, 35 mile per hour winds and the, the, the path so far, this thing has just been kind of all over the place down there. So it's not as though there's anything to really give it a definitive shove in one direction. And we still have a lot of different uh, things, like I said, coming into play with this. So that's why we'll show you what the, the current models are thinking coming up a little bit later on. But there's still, I mean, the, the cone of uncertainty, which is exactly what the name implies, goes all the way from Mexico to Louisiana with that. So I'll show you that in a second. Temperatures are in the low 70s. Uh, New Braunfels, Seguin, Pleasanton here in town. Humidity is not bad. And uh, mold, as well as fall elm and ragweed, are all on the moderate side. Throughout the rest of today, well, we got the partly cloudy skies this morning. A shower or two is possible today. Not very likely, though, if anything, mainly down to the south. And then, like I said, tomorrow's absolutely beautiful, pleasant in the morning, even better, kind of dare I say coolish on Sunday morning. A lot of sunshine tomorrow and mid 80s. Then may start to see the uh, the effects of that storm coming in here by Sunday. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and officer Nick Solis and you've had a couple of uh, a couple of doozies going on so far this morning. Yeah, we had a lot of major accidents, Mike. Uh, another one here. This looks like a motor vehicle pedestrian accident here on the third IH 35 North at Randolph Boulevard. This one's fairly new right now. I'll get you more details on that when I can. Uh, right. We also are working on this accident eastbound South Loop 1604 East at Campbellton Road. It looks like there's one lane blocked off there. Just keep that in mind if you are heading in that direction. This major accident we've had since one in the morning here still causing 35 southbound to South Southbound lanes of 35 to be sh uh, shut down. Um, all traffic is being diverted to loop South Loop 1604 East and West. So just keep that in mind. If you are heading this direction, this is causing a lot of traffic buildup from 410 already down to 35 and 1604. All right, let's take a look at Transit Guide 10 and Medical right now. Traffic picking up around the city, but still flowing very smooth. 10 and Wurzbach looks good as well. And uh, let's see what else we have here. 37 and Southeast Military on the Southeast side look great. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. About in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Nick. Firefighters on the scene of a fire in Alamo Heights. That fire has reignited as we saw in the last half hour. Katrina Weber's on College Boulevard and Woodway Lane live with the latest. Katrina. Good morning. It looks like they finally have all of the flames out, but firefighters are being very methodical, very careful in going through this house. Uh, we hear the saw going. It appears that they're cutting into the roof because that was the area they were focusing on inside that attic where the fire did flare up, as you saw the last half hour. Uh, this fire broke out sometime around three or a little bit after three, according to the homeowner. I talked to him earlier. He says that his father was the first to notice something. He heard a popping sound 
up in the attic. They took a look outside the, around the outside of their house with flashlights, didn't see anything. When they went back and that's when they noticed the smoke coming out of the attic area. They called the fire department, they got out safely. Firefighters moved in and they've been here ever since. Uh, they have been putting water up in the top, uh, upper portion of that house, focusing on the attic. Again, uh, we did see some flames flare up again last half hour, just when they thought it was out. But for now, it looks like this is just a mop-up job that they're doing, making sure that nothing else sparks up again. Reporting live in Alamo Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. There are now 46 days until Election Day, but some Americans are already voting. President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden both heading into Minnesota today, where early voting begins this morning. And last night, both candidates held events at the same time. The president held a rally in Wisconsin, and Biden had a drive-up town hall in Pennsylvania. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. President Trump holding a late-night rally in Wisconsin, attacking former Vice President Joe Biden. The man is incompetent. He's been there for 47 years. He didn't do a thing. The president is aiming to boost rural turnout in the battleground state, speaking to a mostly maskless crowd in an airport hangar in Mosinee, a city of fewer than 4,000 people. What we've done in a very, very short period of time is what nobody thought. And we came in, and we did it, and we did it for you. Now we have to get four more years to cement it and to do additional things, including tax cuts. They're going to raise your taxes. The president's rally comes as Wisconsin sees a spike in coronavirus cases. In stark contrast, Biden last night holding a drive-in town hall in Pennsylvania. Voters in cars parked behind Biden listening on FM radio. Both the audience members and the vehicle socially distant as Biden took questions in his native Scranton. Chief, didn't I meet you when you were chief? Uh, we did, sir. That's what I pleasure. thought. Good Looking at you. you like I know, I know. <laughs> Good evening, Vice President evening. Biden. Biden acknowledging he's benefited from white privilege, but also saying he's faced unfair treatment of his own during his working class upbringing. We're used to guys who look down their nose at us. We look to people who look at us and think that we're suckers. Look at us and they think that we don't, we were not equivalent to them. If you didn't have a college degree, you must be stupid. If in fact you didn't get to go to an Ivy school. Biden blasted Trump saying the president should step down because of how he's handled the pandemic. This is all about one thing, the stock market. He doesn't want to see anything happen. It's all about his reelection. It should be about the American people. And they're in trouble. And now another former member of the Trump administration turning against the president. Olivia Troy, who served on the coronavirus task force as Vice President Pence's advisor, tells The Washington Post Trump has a flat-out disregard for human life. Before leaving for Wisconsin, the president reacting to Troy's comments. I have no idea who she is. I don't met her. I never met her to the best of my knowledge. Maybe she was in a room. I have no idea who she is. She doesn't know me. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. In other morning headlines, Bluebell Creameries must pay a fine after settling a lawsuit. The Texas-based ice cream manufacturer needs to pay more than $17 million in criminal penalties. Bluebell pleaded guilty to a pair of misdemeanor counts related to a listeria outbreak. The company did not immediately recall the infected items or make a statement about the health risk. It's a record-setting fine for a food safety case conviction. The obesity rate in the U.S. has hit a new record. That's according to the nonprofit organization Trust for America's Health. The report states that the U.S. adult obesity rate is now more than 42 percent. That's the first time it has passed the 40 percent mark. The report found the rate of childhood obesity is also rising. The latest data shows more than 19 percent of those 19 and under are obese. Obesity comes with serious health consequences, including an increased risk of COVID-19 complications. Right now, 640, 72 degrees. And racism is illegal at work, but it can still happen. After the break, we'll go over what you should do if you are facing racial harassment on the job. It can be subtle. You wouldn't fit in here. And not so subtle. We don't promote people like you. Racism at work can impact a person's performance, promotions, and paycheck. Specialist in employment law, Bertha Bruezzo, says gathering evidence is key. If it's not documented, then it didn't happen. Keep a record of face-to-face -face conversations detailing what was said, if anyone else heard, and if you told anyone about it. 
take photos of anything physically posted, print out copies of written letters or emails. If it's a text message, take a screenshot. Don't record conversations. It could be illegal. And don't use company computers or phones to document on. And don't use company computers or phones to document it on. There is no expectation of privacy when using your employer's software or hardware. Report it to Human Services. But be aware there is a risk in some cases. You get your hours cut or they make your life miserable. Also, ask yourself. What is it that you want to accomplish? Do you want to... Um, quietly move with move on with your life and just move on to another job if so then you know perhaps going to hr isn't the right decision remember these cases can take two to three years to resolve if you want to pursue the case further contact a lawyer versed in employee rights another tip identify a co-worker who does work similar to you is racially different and compare how they are treated at work and remember, each state has their own protections against discrimination. Be sure to check with a lawyer in your state to see if you have a case. David Sears, Case at 12 News. It's now quarter to seven. Let's go ahead and check back with Nick about the traffic on the roads. I understand there's a few accidents out there. Yeah, Steph, right now dealing with a couple of major accidents still. So we had this one right here. It's a motor vehicle pedestrian accident, IH-35 North, the access road at Randolph Boulevard. That looks like it's getting cleared up now. Don't know the status of anything there. Uh, just know that the accident was at that intersection involving a pedestrian. All right, we're also dealing with this accident. Eastbound South Loop 1604 East at Campbellton Road. It's a two vehicle accident there. It's affecting both east and westbound lanes of uh, 1604. So expect a delay if you are heading in both directions there. And then just east of there, we've had this major accident we've been working on all morning that's actually uh, caused the highway to close down on southbound I-35 South. Uh, at South Loop 1604. If you're going 35 South, you're going to have to exit 1604. You can see the traffic build up here is already backing up traffic all the way to 410. So expect a delay if you're going southbound in this direction. All right, uh, Trans Guy 10 West at 1604 looking good. 35 at FM 1103 still flowing smoothly over there on the north side of town and 10 at La Cantera. That looks good as well. All right, everyone, just remember, please wear that seatbelt today. I want everyone get into work safely. Thank you, Nick. Yes, thank you. And we are excited about this weekend, Mike. Yeah, a couple of nice mornings ahead. Indeed, last full weekend of summer. Um, fall officially begins on oh, Tuesday, man. and it's going to be a, it's going to be a dandy, especially the first three fourths of the weekend. We'll put it that way. Uh, humidity. This is the the big thing, and this is why the weekend is going to be so good. We've got some humidity out there this morning. It's not oppressively humid. It will be dropping down later on today. We start to get that surge of drier air coming in here by later on this evening. And I mean, dew points even tomorrow morning are not that high, so it's going to be really comfortable tomorrow. And the dry air will continue to pump in here as we go even into uh, tomorrow night as well as into Sunday. And that's really going to allow temperatures to drop. That well, that. Uh, Always get that bad frame in there. That's really going to allow temperatures to drop down then by Sunday morning. We're going to be in the low 60s here in town, so some 50s in portions of the hill country. Sit outside, you definitely may need a sweatshirt or something, which is always fantastic news. All right, here's Tropical Depression 22 down there in the uh, southern Gulf of Mexico. And again, this is just to give a little history. This is with the same disturbance that was parked right about uh, just off the, the South Texas coast earlier on in the week had a couple of showers there and at that time it looked like it was just going to sort of fizzle out decided to stay in the uh, waters of the gulf of mexico gain a little bit of strength tropical depression like i said 22 right now it really has been sort of meandering around down there it is forecast to become tropical storm by later on today and then it will continue its path to the basically north make a left hand turn this is from the National Hurricane Center as of right now taking some of the computer model data become a category one storm then by late tomorrow night into Sunday continue to work its way in the direction of the Texas coast, the South Texas coast, then make a big right hand turn up to the north and sort of par parallel the coast. And this is going to be Monday into Tuesday. Uh, still, there's the cone of uncertainty from Mexico all the way up to Louisiana. So it can go anywhere in here. And one of the reasons for that is you look at some of the computer models, the spaghetti models, if you will, all the different computer models. Sure, the consensus is right here making that left hand that dog leg turn to the west over the weekend but i mean one of them has it dropping down to the south another one has it going straight in here this one has it just taken off straight in toward new orleans so that's why there is so much uncertainty as of right now so you can't put anything 
in stone as right now as far as what this is going to be doing. However, based on the hurricane uh, computer models as well as some of the other computer models, that's what I'm putting the chance of rain in for late Sunday into Monday. 86 degrees today, partly cloudy skies. A shower or two is possible today, not very likely though. 90 for high temperature, and we'll start to see the wind pick up a little bit more out of the uh, northeast, and so that's going to start to pull in some of that drier air. Tomorrow, it looks absolutely fantastic. 65 degrees starting off, 85 that lower 60s on Sunday, just wonderful. Then the clouds start to move in here on Sunday and may see some rain starting late Sunday about dinner time and then overnight into Monday, Tuesday. Based on the information right now, Monday, Tuesday could have some uh, potentially heavy rain, especially say east of uh, 35 down toward the coastal plain and then it'll start to clear on out. Again, it's one of those situations we continue to watch it. Nothing is set in stone. You definitely have our attention. Yep. Yes, you do. But for now, we'll enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 650, 72 degrees. All right, a little warning here is going to be gross. If you're <laughs> looking at the color of your snot to determine if you have a cold or allergies, you might not find much help there. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we give you some true methods to see which one you really have. Really? Okay. That's, that's, what it, that's what we're going to learn okay. tomorrow. Outside with live <laughs> cab looking towards downtown. We'll get you updated again on the traffic situation as we approach the top of the hour. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. An all morning firefight finally appears to be winding down. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber live in Alamo Heights. This is where firefighters have been battling this fire uh, at this house here on College Boulevard since about three this morning. The homeowner says he heard a popping noise, then noticed his house start to go up in flames. He and his father made it out safely. The firefighters have been having a heck of a time with this fire all morning. Every time they get it out, they start to see new flames spark up. For a while, they were also concerned about possible ammunition in the house, but it doesn't look like any of that went off and no injuries reported here. Reporting live in Alamo Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Have you ever noticed that LaSalle County, home to the city of Catua, has a weird shape? Neither did we, until a viewer asked us why. So we decided to find the answer. It took combing through files in the archives at the Texas General Land Office in Austin and a brief trip to Encinal to figure it out. Usually we don't find too many that are this, maybe this big of an error. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, we'll show you what we uncovered and answer once and for all why LaSalle County's southern border goes askew. That's coming up. Right now it's 5 till 7. Let's go ahead and check back with Nick Solis. Uh, still following two big accidents this morning. Yeah, eastbound south through 1604 east at Campbellton Road. We still got that accident there uh, where uh, vehicles still blocking the one of the lanes. This major accident, southbound I-35 south at south loop 1604. The, the lanes of 35 southbound still closed down and uh, no time frame there for when they will open up. And uh, that's it. Tana Dominion. Uh, heavy traffic right now. If you are going eastbound, uh, they expect a little delay. Mike? Thank you very much, sir. I was just going to say, I love those stories that Justin does about why things are the yeah, way they it's are around the area. 72 here in town, uh, low to mid 60s in parts of the Hill Country. And um, good looking day today, 86 degrees at noon. Maybe a stray shower or two. Kind of doubtful. Wind's going to pick up out of the northeast, somewhat pull in drier air. Sets us up for a spectacular day tomorrow. Nice and cool Sunday morning. Then we're still going to be watching what may or may not happen with that uh, system there in the Gulf. Thank you, guys. Exciting. Very exciting. You guys have a great week. Weekend. See you back here for GMSA at 9.